Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with the greatest recordings ever. And today, we're talking about Tchaikovsky's Fourth Symphony. You know, it's so common to do the Tchaikovsky symphonies in a clump of the last three, four, five, and six, because no one much cares about one, two, and three, despite the fact that they're lovely works. I mean, they're beautiful, marvelous works, and we're going to talk about them. Of course we are at some point in this series, because there are some stupendous recordings of those works. But Tchaikovsky 4 has been recorded a hundred billion, zillion, trillion, quintillion times by just about everybody. It actually is a tough piece to do because it's a little imbalanced. It has a big, long first movement, like 20 minutes or so, and then three much shorter ones. And of course, the third one is that razzle dazzle pizzicato scherzo. Anyway, you know how it goes with the woodwind trio. I mean, it's just marvelous with the impossible piccolo solo. And then you've got the finale. The finale is, I mean, this, the slow movement takes care of itself, right? It's just gorgeous. Beautiful oboe tune, wonderful string response, a lovely middle section. What's not to love? But the finale, the finale, which has... Like that, right? Well, that can really misfire. For some reason. First of all, there's a tendency to play it as fast as humanly possible. And unless you're Yevgeny Moravinsky with the Leningrad Philharmonic, uh, you may not be able to pull it off. I mean, you know, you can, but it's almost more exciting sometimes when you actually hear articulation in all of those runs, you know, where they're very, very quick, but also really together. You know, that, that, that does something. But you also want it to have that finale to have that that sense of uninhibited joy, you know, because, you know, the motto theme comes back at the end and almost upsets the apple cart. And, you know, Tchaikovsky said that was supposed to be sort of his popular festival. Go out among the people if you can't be happy yourself. They will, at least you can pretend. Well, you know, that was Tchaikovsky. But, you know, you wanted to have that kind of, of rustic, frolic sense of, you know, enjoyability, enjoyableness, enjoyablosity whatever you want, but you don't want it to sound contrived and you don't want it to sound excessively bombastic. And, it, you know, some people just don't carry it off terribly well. So it's a tricky symphony. Let's just leave it at that. Some conductors have done it a billion times, like Carrion, who always did a good job with it and who play recorded it 50,000 times. There is, of course, as I just mentioned, Moravinsky. One of the really surprising good ones of recent years was Daniel Barenboim with Chicago. He did an excellent job with it. I mean, there are lots of good ones. They really are. However, however, if you're talking about the greatest recordings ever, and you want one that's really just a smoker, I would pick, well, for this talk anyway, Ricardo Muti with the Philharmonia. I should turn it right side up, shouldn't I? Ricardo Muti with the Philharmonia. That's the one. Now, of course, he remade it in Philly. Um, and it's very, very good. But this is the one. This is the one. This has, it has, it has youthfulness. It, it's fresh. You have a young conductor who's really into it, who is is energizing the orchestra, just galvanizing them to, to do their, their very best. It's a take-no-prisoners, thrill-packed account, quite well recorded, because, you know, a lot of Muti's EMI recordings with the Philharmonia, they just didn't sound that good. I'm not sure why. I mean, Muti seems to be one of those conductors who didn't really care very much about how his records sounded. Some do, some don't. And you know, because because EMI was was their golden age when they were with Previn and the LSO, and they were making really fabulous sounding recordings, and some of them were marvelous, and some of them just weren't. And and so, the Tchaikovsky cycle with Muti, generally speaking, was very very good. I mean, the whole thing is quite reliable, thank God. And this one, which was recorded in 1979, um, in Abbey Road Studio, yeah, good old Abbey Road. Yeah, we all know about that. Uh, really, really. Uh, is impressive. It has impact. It is vivid. It, it is really sharply etched in keeping with, with Moody's interpretation. In other words, it has clarity and, uh, you know, not too much reverb and not, you know, it, it just sounds really, really good. 
And the performance is, is incendiary. That's the word, incendiary. It's like he's discovering the work for the first time. And when you listen to it, you discover it along with him. And that's why it's one of the greatest recordings ever. Just marvelous. Oh, the finale. Oh, the development section of the first movement. The lovely lyrical slow movement. The dazzling pizzicato. It's all there. It really is. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. And take care.